Father, we come to those who follow them. You know, I haven't passed yet, but a lot of times when I see, say something, my wife would be like, you're such an old generation. <laughs> it's like, how about your age? How come you're talking about that now? <laughs> you know? You may be saying, but, but we have the iPhone now. We have the laptop. Isn't those new? But we are reminded, it's the new way of doing the same old things. It's just the new methods. But it's not something that is new in our life. Today's scripture reminds us of the true newness that we have to etch into our heart. Okay, so how do we become new? Let's all turn to scripture again. We'll start with our, our verse... Beginning of our verse, chap, uh, verse 3. Uh, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. You know, we've discussed for the past couple of months that we must, in order to be new, old must die. We talked about this for the last two months of what it means to repent, what it means to be baptized. We cannot retain the old and hope to become new at the same time. You just cannot do it. You're either a caterpillar or a butterfly. You can't be half and half unless you're that butterfly at, in that movie. What's that movie? Bug's Life. We must die to our old sinful self of old and crucify our old self with, on the cross with Jesus so that we can become new. The scripture continues. Let's continue on. Verse 6 through 8 goes like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin for one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. In other words, when we crucify our old self on the cross, our sin no longer has power over us. We are no longer slaves to sin, but set free from sin. We are free to live with Christ. Okay, so... What does the scripture mean when it says that we are no longer enslaved to sin? Let me ask you, are you guys enslaved to sin? Sometimes it feels like we are because there's these old habits that we try to break and we just can't seem to break it. It's like, I don't want to do this, but I do it. And I repent and I say, I don't want to do this. And I do it again. And I, sometimes... I feel like I'm still enslaved to sin. So how do we overcome that? What does it mean that we are no longer enslaved to sin? That means if you choose to, when you become a Christian, when you crucify your old self, if you choose to, you will no longer be enslaved. I'm going to connect it to a little bit later. But this is the fact. If you have crucified yourself, basically what you're saying is, I want to die to myself. I don't want to live as June Park. I don't want to do, live with June Park anymore. I want to live as 
your child, God. Once you have done that, if you choose to, you are no longer enslaved to sin. That means if you spend time with God, and God is more and more on your mind, your old self can no longer bully you around. Understand? You know, if you ever been bullied at school, you know, I've seen some Korean movies where, like, this kid, junior high kid, is bullied at school, and his older brother, high school, big football player, comes in and just beat up everybody else, you know, who's been bullying him around. Well, we have that older brother. He's Christ. In fact, he's like the Superman, right? Nobody could take him on. If you spend time with him, sin cannot bully you around anymore. Sin cannot no longer make you do stuff that you don't want to do. Give up your time. Give up your energy. Give up your time on screen. Give up your selfishness. You know, when you choose to t- spend time with your older brother Christ, he will take care of those bullies for you. But only if you choose to. That means if you ask God to help, you resist the sin, to resist your old self, God will not only help you to resist sin, but he will help you become totally happy, joyful, fulfilled, complete, without sin. You know, sometimes we feel like, you know, actually I need some sin in my life to make me happy. It's like the spice. You know, life without sin is too bland, too boring. There's no flavor in life. God says, no. Not only will I help you to overcome sin, I will make it so it becomes the most flavorful life, the most joyful life. But what you have to do is you have to ask him to help you to experience that life. Now we understand a little bit of what it means to be not enslaved to sin. Let's go on to the, to the final verses. I'm going to read from verses 12 through 13. It says this, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God. Present yourselves to God. This must be your resolution, that you will present yourselves to God. And when that happens, the sin will no longer reign in your body to make it obey its passions. To make you be frustrated, to make you be angry, to make you be lustful, to make you be rebellious. It will overcome. So on the first worship of 2021, the first thing that I want all of you to do is assess your spiritual condition, your spiritual health, your relationship with God. Are you healthy or are you sick? Are you old or are you new? Or are you somewhere in between? Are you still in the cocoon stage? Have you become new by wanting to crucify your old self, the self that loves only me, the self that's kind of has this narrow vision of life? Have you crucified that self so you could live with Christ, like Christ, be fulfilled with Christ, to be perfect like Christ? Have you taken a vow to abide with God, in God for all eternity? Have you made a commitment to loving God more and more, to treasuring God more and more? What do you treasure in your heart right now in the year 2021? Many young kids just want to have fun. I treasure having fun. I don't really don't know what it is, but, you know, I'm going to do whatever to find out what that is. Well, 
I need you to listen to the truth. And the truth is, God is everything. That God is the true treasure of life that will fulfill you not, like nothing else in this world could give you. Do you want to be new? Do you want to be committed to God? Do you want to love and treasure God? I want you to ask your heart right now. I want you to assess your spiritual life right now. Now, as we close, some of you might say, oh, you know, I'm not ready yet. And that's okay. Continue discovering God in your prayer and your quiet time. Continue until God readies your heart to take a what? Holy vow of marriage. So you could love him and be with him for all eternity. Some of you may not be ready, and that's okay in God's time. Now, if you have taken this vow, this commitment, if you have made New Year's resolution to be more like God, to mature in God, to be more Christ-like, you must spend more time with Christ in QT and prayer. You know, our guided QT, I thank, thank you for those who, who's been continuing, and, and for those who have not, I pray that, that you guys would, would start. Because God is waiting to spend time with you in His Word. God is waiting for, for a chance to touch your heart through your prayers. Not only do you spend more time with God, you have to practice your faith. You have to practice your relationship with God. Like I said, when you spend time with your older brother, Nothing could bully you around. You will have that, that power. You'll be empowered. When you start practicing your faith, when you start tasting the victory, overcoming sin, and experience that true joy, trust me, it will be like true water. It will quench your thirst like no soda drink could, could have ever done. I want to remind you all that in order for you to grow, in order for you to mature, that you cannot do it on your own, right? We've tried before. I've tried before. It doesn't work. My efforts will not be enough. You know, God has to empower you. God has to empower you, so you need to spend more time with God. But not only God, you know, your parents are there to support you. Some of you are very hesitant about talking to your parents about asking for support but God put them there for a purpose you know your parents are always on your side even though sometimes they don't seem like it they are and most most all of your parents are really uh, outstanding Christians I would say don't be ashamed or embarrassed to talk to them and say, you know, mom, you know, dad, I need your help with this. You know, I'm, I'm, I want to better myself here and I want to do these, these things, but, you know, I'm having a hard time. You know, some of you have said that you wanted to, be, you know, wake up more earlier and spend time with God more on your QT. You wanted to be more productive by, by maybe... Uh, Reducing the amount of time you stream on the web, or watch TV. Well, ask your parents for help. Say, so, Mom, can you wake me up 30 minutes earlier? You know, can we do quiet time together? That would really support me. It would really help me to get going. So, depend on God. Depend on your parents. Number three, depend on your teachers and me. We are here for you. Pick up the phone, call, send us an email. You know, God put us here for a reason. Lastly, your peers. You know, I know our youth group is pretty tightly knit together. And you guys are going through the similar things because you guys are all similar age. 
sometimes you feel alone. You, you feel like this problem is just mine. You know, I'm just going through this. But most of the youth are going through the same thing. Call your peers and say, hey, let's pray together. I know Shu has done a great job preparing for this, this prayer meeting for, for you guys too. Peer prayer is very, very important because something that's private, you don't want to talk with, with your teachers or your, you know, your parents or, some, or, or other adults, you could do it within yourselves pretty plainly. You, know? you guys could express yourself more. And your peers are there. Your brothers and sisters in Christ is there. Some are older than you. Some are younger than you. God has put this bond of love together so you guys could grow together. Let's use, utilize in the year 2021 these four venues of support. God, your parents, teachers, and me, and your peers, okay? You know, Becoming new, contrary to what you believe, is not that hard. Getting rid of the old is not that hard. You might be thinking, no, that's hard. You just have to remember one thing. It just requires you to have attention. You need to focus. You need to be consistent. You know, it's like overcoming COVID. You know, when at the beginning of COVID, we all had a hard time remembering not to touch things, wash your hands, and use sanitizers. My wife just scolded me so many times, wash your hands. You know, I, you know, I check the mail. I, I get those mails. I come in, wash your hands. Okay. I must have washed my hands like 10 times, but I needed my wife to always remind me. Don't touch that and touch Daniel. <laughs> wash your hand. Sanitize your hand. You know, it's like, it was so hard for me at the beginning because I'm not used to it. But now, because we all know the seriousness of COVID, that we can actually, what? Die from it. We pay more attention to paying attention, basically, right? I am more used to it now. As soon as I walk into a market, what do I do? Sanitize my hands. As soon as I come out of the market and I put all the groceries in the back of my trunk, what do I do? Sanitize my hands. Same thing with getting rid of the old and becoming new. At the beginning, we forget the fact that we are new. We, we, we thoughtlessly think and do the same old things that we did before. We forget that we are not the old, that we are new. We forget about it. But we have to know the seriousness of death, that it will kill you, that we will die from this thing. And we need to pay, pay more attention to paying attention. We need to remind ourselves that we are new. And just as we sanitize our hands and wash our hands, we have to go to God and be cleansed. Our mind, full of the old, full of the world, get rid of it, and just think about God. Just thinking about God alone will sanitize you. Becoming new is not that heart. You just need to be sanitized with thoughts of God. It doesn't take a miracle because God will perform the miracle in you. All you have to do is just think about God. Just sanitize yourself with God. Right now, let's everybody uh, close our eyes and just think about where you are. Am I new? Do I want to be new? Do I actually love my old self too much not to give it up? If you are, it's okay. God's waiting for you. I just pray that you won't give up on God. That you will continue discovering God. But if you have made a commitment, if you have made a commitment to, to get rid of the old, to love God instead of the old things in life. To try to please God and not please yourself because you know that that's where you will truly be fulfilled and happy. At this moment, I pray that you would etch your resolutions into your heart. And you'll be committed to asking God for help 
to asking your parents for help, to asking me and teachers for help, and asking your peers for encouragement together so we could succeed together as being you. You are not alone. You don't have to be lonely in your world of one. You are surrounded by your brothers and sisters, your loving parents, your loving teachers, and the most is God. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. Make us new. Make us great. Make us good. Make us happy. Make us be fulfilled. Make us not be lonely. Make us not be sad and depressed. We know that everything good is in you, Lord. That you are our ultimate ultimate father and our ultimate older brother who could get rid of all the sinful bullies in my life, Lord. 